We're ready now to start blending different exposures together to create our uh, final extended dynamic range images from high dynamic range scenes. We're going to start with very uh, basic techniques for doing this and then work our way towards more complex. So for the first one, we're going to just work with two exposures, a light exposure and a darker exposure. And we need to understand how we can get those exposures into Photoshop, how to get them set up as layers, uh, and then how to work with a layer mask in order to bring through parts of uh, one exposure that we want and hide other parts of the exposures that we don't want. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is open those up in Photoshop. And if you're working with raw files, which I hope you are, uh, you need to do any sort of raw adjustments and raw conversions and uh, white balance and, and all of those types of adjustments that you would do to prepare these raw files for working on in Photoshop and, uh, and then open them up in Photoshop to work on them. Now that they're here in Photoshop, you can see here's the dark exposure and there's the light exposure. They're in two separate image files and we want to get them together into one image file as layers. How we layer these up uh, sometimes is important and other times is not important. Sometimes it doesn't matter what order the layers go in. In this case, I'm going to start with the light layer on top. So to do that, I'm going to select all, control A to select the whole image, control C to copy that image. Now we're going to move over to the dark image and I'm going to go control V to paste the light image on top of the dark image. And we can see in the layers palette that that's exactly what I have. I have the light layer on top and the dark layer as the background image. And if we turn off the top layer, the bottom layer comes through. Turning on the top layer, we see just that, that light exposure again. One thing that it's uh, a good idea to do before you start working with blending is to see if your images actually line up. Now if you took these images and there was no camera motion, the two images should line up perfectly. If you did have some camera motion, you might need to do some additional image alignment. We'll, we'll get to that later, but let's just check first. The way to do that is to set, uh, with the top layer selected, set the opacity to 50%. And then zoom in uh, all the way and take a look around and see if things line up correctly or if you have things that are out of alignment. Now in this image I can see all the things that aren't moving like the tree trunks and the landscape, the mountains and whatnot look lined up just fine. The clouds don't line up perfectly because obviously they were moving between the exposures. Also some of my tree branches at the tops of the trees don't line up perfectly because uh, the, the trees were blowing around a little bit and the branches moved between exposures. But uh, with careful blending, we can we should be able to work with that so that we don't have issues um, with the parts of the image that don't line up perfectly, and we don't need to do any further alignment to this image. So I can set the opacity of the top layer back to 100%. The next step is to add a layer mask. So with that top layer uh, selected, I'm going to click the Add Layer Mask button and add in a white mask. The white mask. Uh, lets us see what's happening on this top layer and doesn't let us see anything of what's on the layer below. But any black or shades of gray on this white mask that we introduce will allow us to see through this top layer to what's below it, wherever the mask has um, been painted with black or gray. So to do that, I would just take uh, my brush tool set the foreground color or the brush color to black, which it is. Um, and we're going to start here with a hard brush and with the opacity of the brush set to 100%. And with the white mask selected, we're going to paint on the mask with black paint. And you can see very quickly that wherever we paint with black, we see through to the layer that's below. So in this case, we are seeing through to the darker layer below and there's that darker sky showing through. And anywhere I paint with black, that's what's going to happen. So I can paint in the darker parts of the sky and bring those through from below. 
So what I'm doing is I'm showing the, uh, the light part of the image where I want to, and the parts of the darker image, the darker exposure, I'm showing where I want those to show. But it's obviously not very natural looking because I have this hard uh, edge uh, boundary between the two exposures. And we can see that if we look at the mask here by all clicking on the mask, you can see that hard edge uh, mask area that I created and the part where it's black I'm seeing through to the bottom exposure and the part where it's white I'm seeing the top exposure. And that's not going to work for us. It's not a natural transition. But you get the idea of how you can use masks to see parts of one exposure and other parts of a different exposure. In fact, if we turn off this top layer, there's the whole dark exposure. And when we turn it back on, you can see those light parts of the lighter exposure that we want to keep. But let's try it with a technique that will give us hopefully more pleasing results. So I'm going to back up here. And this time, instead of using a hard edge brush, I'm going to use a very soft brush. And instead of using opacity of 100%, I'm going to use opacity closer to 40%. And I'm going to just very gradually now be able to paint in that effect incrementally. And I can also do it with a very smooth transition instead of that hard transition because I'm using a feathered brush. And I can slowly paint in the effect more and more into the areas that I want it where I want it to go. And already you can see that that's giving us uh, a much more realistic look. And let's compare what this mask looks like to the previous mask. So I'll click on the mask and you can see this is a much more uh, feathered edge mask and it fades from uh, near black to light gray so that the effect uh, has a nice smooth transition and uh, that creates a much more realistic effect to our blending. And let's take a look at the, there's the entire dark uh, exposure and then as we bring in the light parts of the exposure on top of that we can see how that really opens up and creates that balance between the bright sky and the darker foreground. Now again this is probably not going to create the most natural effect that you're going for. Um, we still have some issues with the transition up here being fairly dark um, but it's a, it's a good start. It's a very basic technique and sometimes this basic uh, painting with black paint on the white mask to bring through uh, parts of the exposure below is all that's needed and this technique is uh, sometimes completely effective. Um, but it's now time to move on to some other techniques which will help us be more precise and achieve even more realistic uh, results.